Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Paulette Wajardo, Mayor Paulette Wajardo, and I want to thank you all for joining us today. We're very grateful to you for your vigilance as each and every one of you is making a difference to protect our city. Our goal remains the same. We want to get everyone who wants to be vaccinated fully vaccinated. Our city county health department is providing free vaccinations, free third doses of the vaccine for those who qualify, free COVID testing, free uh, Regeneron infusions if you have COVID-19, and free rides if you need one. So it is my job to provide you with easy access to the public health that your tax dollars are, are paying for. So trust that I will keep developing new programs to provide you the very best access to public health services that you deserve. I ask you though, to join me and every single living president of the United States in getting vaccinated. Every single governor from all 50 states, from both political parties, have been vaccinated. Over 96% of the United States physicians are vaccinated. If you want to be vaccinated, our city council is committed to doing everything that we can to help you get vaccinated. In yesterday's council meeting, our public health director, Annette Rodriguez, informed the council that in August, Nueces County has hit a peak for positive COVID cases. In August alone, we had 12,000 positive cases. In the first week of this month, we had 46 deaths. The City County Public Health District has administered 153,000 vaccinations. In Nueces County, 54% of people who are 12 and older are fully vaccinated. And if you want to get vaccinated, there are options available. If you are a 12 of 12 years of age or older, please get vaccinated today or as soon as possible. At La Palmera Mall is probably the most convenient place. There are several different options, but this is a very convenient place and of course free of charge. La Palmera Mall is averaging 317 daily vaccinations. So you can find the clinic at the old Charming Charlie location, which is Caddy Corner or across from the Grimaldi's Pizzeria. The vaccine clinic is open daily, Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. For the third dose, if you are immunocompromised, you may also go to La Palmera Mall to receive that third dose vaccine free of charge. And the City County Health District has also opened the Greenwood Senior Center as another free open vaccine site. And to date, the Greenwood Senior Center has also administered 167 vaccines. The Senior Center is open Monday through Friday from 12 p.m. to noon uh, to 7 p.m. and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And this vaccine site was made available for those that might need another location which might be easier to get to after one gets out of work. So with the launch or the relaunch of uh, the Save Our Seniors program, your Corpus Christi firefighters are providing additional doses to our senior citizens in the community. We've contacted over 3,000 senior citizens to inform them of the opportunity to receive their third dose or their third shot. And to date, Corpus Christi Fire Department is working on vaccinating 488 senior citizens who will be receiving their additional dose. If you're a senior, or if you know of a senior in need of that additional shot, please call 361-826-CITY. That's 361-826-2489. And just last week, I initiated another program that will make getting vaccinated more convenient to our teens and those who work in our school system. The teen mobile vaccination program kicked off last Wednesday and to date, 73 people have been vaccinated via the program. All sites are open for students 12 years of age and older, and that also have a parent consent form signed. You can find those consent forms at www.cctexas.com 
forward slash teen MVP, period. Uh, and throughout the month, well, first of all, these vaccine sites also include a uh, vaccination opportunity for teachers, school staff, and parents. And throughout the month of September, every Wednesday and Thursday, our public health department will be at different middle and high school uh, middle and high schools to accommodate those who are still looking to get their vaccine shot. Again, the goal is to make the vaccine easily accessible to you or your children and or. I also want to make sure that vaccines are readily available to you in home, which is why we created the in-home program. And that is a great tool for administering vaccines directly to your doorstep. Again, our Corpus Christi Fire Department is working double time to provide those vaccines to you at home. They are working, or I'm sorry, they are providing first, second, and additional doses to those who need it. To date, our fire department has registered over 1,000 residents and have administered over 750 vaccines. So if you would like an in-home vaccination, please do not hesitate to call the city's customer call center at 826-CITY, or that's 826-2489. We encourage everyone and know that we do not ask questions. We don't care why you want it at home. We just want to make sure that you have it available to you should you want to be vaccinated in the privacy of your own home. So it's also important to know that you can still get COVID testing or test, yeah, testing for free Monday through Thursdays at the old Memorial Hospital parking lot from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And this is a drive-through testing site. Uh, moving on to infusions, Regeneron uh, Region Cove, a monoclonal antibody infusion treatment is available for positive COVID-19 individuals within 10 days of onset symptoms and a pulse oxygen level greater than 93%. These individuals, 12 years of age and older who weigh at least 88 pounds, must be at high risk for progression to severe COVID-19, including hospitalization or death. Patients with mild to moderate symptoms must meet eligibility requirements and must be referred by a doctor. To schedule an appointment, you can call 361-561-1101 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And if you do not have a doctor or primary caregiver, you may call this same number for a free referral. You can still receive the, Regener the Regeneron infusion at Physicians West Plaza located at 2601 Hospital Boulevard. Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. So we encourage you uh, to do that. And of course, we have our uh, the infusion clinic that is taking place at the Richard Borchard Fairgrounds as well on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And transportation, again, we like to reiterate this. If you need transportation, our Corpus Christi Regional Transportation Authority or the RTA will provide free rides to and from the city's vaccination clinic at La Palmera Mall. So once on the bus, all you have to do is let the driver know that you are going to get a vaccine and the ride will be free of charge. So in conclusion, um, I would ask you to go to www.cctexas.com for more information and details on all the programs that we've mentioned. I urge everyone to protect yourself and your family and friends by wearing a mask, socially distancing, and washing your hands often. We can also protect each other by remaining vigilant and continuing to. So thank you very much. And now we'll pause for a brief Spanish translation, and then we'll have our public health director, Annette Rodriguez, come forward. Nuestro objetivo sigue siendo el mismo. Queremos que nuestros residentes estén vacunados, por lo que el Distrito de Salud continúa ofreciendo vacunas gratuitas, terceras dosis para quienes califiquen, prueba gratuita de detección del virus, infusión rápida de Region Cove y transporte gratuito. Algunos datos curiosos. Todos los expresidentes vivos de los Estados Unidos están vacunados. Todos los gobernadores de los 50 estados también están vacunados. Más del 96% de los médicos estadounidenses también están vacunados por lo que hacemos lo posible porque usted también lo haga. 
En agosto, el condado de Nueces alcanzó un pico de casos positivos de COVID. La cifra fue de 12,000 casos. En la primera semana de este mes, hemos tenido 46 muertes. El Distrito de Salud ha administrado 153,000 vacunas. En el condado de Nueces, el 54% de las personas mayores de 12 años están completamente vacunadas. Si usted cuenta con 12 años o más, puede recibir la vacuna en el Centro Comercial La Palmera. Este cuenta con el mismo horario del Centro Comercial. También aquí se están administrando terceras dosis para quienes califican. El Centro para Personas Mayores de Greenwood también está disponible para administrar la vacuna. A la fecha, ahí se han administrado 167 vacunas. El horario de esta clínica es de lunes a viernes de 12 del mediodía a 7 de la tarde y el sábado de 10 a 5. El programa Salvemos a Nuestras Personas Mayores continúa. Con el relanzamiento de este programa, los bomberos de Corpus Christi están proporcionando dosis adicionales a los adultos mayores en la comunidad. Si es un adulto mayor o sabe de un adulto mayor que necesita esa vacuna, llame al 826-CIRI, o sea, 826-2489. En cuanto al programa de vacunación móvil para adolescentes, el programa comenzó el miércoles pasado. Hasta la fecha se han vacunado a 73 personas. Todos los sitios están abiertos para estudiantes mayores de 12 años, o, o ma mayores de 12 años, perdón, que tienen formularios de consentimiento de los padres. Esos formularios se encuentran en la dirección www.cctejas.com diagonal TINMVP. Estos sitios de vacunas también son para, ma son para maestros, personal escolar y padres. El programa de vacunas a domicilio. Este programa continúa y ya se han administrado más de 750 vacunas. Se han registrado a más de 900 personas. Si usted quiere recibir su vacu la vacuna en su casa, se le pide llamar al 826-CIDI, o sea, 826-2489. En cuanto a las pruebas de detección del virus, estas se ofrecen de manera gratuita de lunes a jueves en el estacionamiento del Hospital Memorial de 9 de la mañana a 2 de la tarde. La dirección es el 2601 de Hospital Boulevard. En cuanto al programa de infusión rápida Regencov, el tratamiento de Regencov o infusión de anticuerpos monoclonales está disponible para individuos COVID positivos, quienes se encuentran dentro de los 10 días posteriores al inicio de los síntomas y su nivel de oxígeno es mayor al 93%. Debe de contar con más de 12 años y pesar al menos 88 libras. Los tratamientos deben de ser referidos por un médico. Si usted no cuenta con un médico de cabecera y quiere saber si califica para ese tratamiento, se le pide comunicarse al 561-1101. Eh, para el transporte para vacunarse. Si usted necesita transporte para acudir al centro comercial vacunar, eh, perdón, si usted necesita transporte para acudir al centro comercial La Palmera y recibir la vacuna, los autobuses del RTA están proporciona proporcionando ese transporte gratuito desde y hacia la clínica. Solo dígale al conductor que usted debe de ir al centro comercial y su viaje será gratuito. Para más información puede dirigirse a la uh, dirección www.cctejas.com. Thank you, Gabby. Annette Rodriguez, Health Director. So I'm going to start with the Nueces County uh, daily statistics. Well, we're going to look first at the slides that shows the last two weeks. And if you look at uh, the far right uh, to me, that was for that week, 2,474 COVID cases here in Nueces County. And this past week, uh, we see those numbers up and down, 471, 285, 461. That total for this past week is 2,313. So we are starting to see that we are coming down, we believe, uh, um, the peak at this point, which is good news. But there's still very uh, high number of cases, so you still need to be very careful and still protect yourself when you're out. Next slide, please. So this one actually is the, the pie diagram, and it shows us the total cases from the beginning of the pandemic in March of last year. And the total is 61,863 total COVID-19 cases just here in Nueces County. And so of those cases, 55,012 have fully recovered. But we still know that we have over 5,000, 5,778 uh, people that have active COVID-19 that could still transmit virus to their family members, uh, to friends, you know, um, accidentally, of course, and uh, uh, a total of over 1,000 deaths. 
So here's our hospitalization, the way uh, the numbers are looking over the last two weeks. And I think what you'll very easily notice with this graph is that the numbers are starting to come down. So from, um, from two weeks ago, 429 hospitalizations to today, uh, 324 hospitalizations. But those numbers coming down don't always mean that people got discharged and got to go back home to their family members. Some of those uh, we have lost due to COVID-19, um, so they have actually uh, succumbed to the to the illness. Fine. These are our ICU patients. These are patients that are in our hospitals with COVID-19 that need more than just uh, regular med surge. Uh, care. They actually need intensive care. And so you see the numbers are kind of, you know, uh, wobbling a little bit, you know, towards the far end, 106, 111, and then it went back down to 104, then it went back up to 112. So um, now what we're seeing is that our numbers look like, again, like they're dropping uh, a little lower, 102, 195. But again, just to remind people that uh, you have to be very careful when you look at these numbers because very few of these individuals will get discharged from the ICU. Many of these will actually die from COVID-19. And then the total COVID-19 deaths, as I mentioned earlier, is uh, 1,073 for Nueces County, and that is only for Nueces County uh, residents. That's not for any of our surrounding communities. And the final slide that I'm gonna show here um, for the statistics is really uh, the fatalities over the last two weeks. And I think everybody will agree these are very, very high. These are daily numbers. So while on um, the six, we had one fatality, all the other days, 11, seven, six, seven, six, three, six, 11, six, nine, 10, they're very, very high to have daily deaths due to uh, COVID-19. So last week we had 46 people that died uh, related to COVID-19, and this past week, um, uh, this week we've had 41. So again, the deaths do seem to be coming down. Um, but we, we actually believe that this month, September, may be our highest uh, number of deaths that we've seen throughout the whole pandemic. I'm going to talk now a little bit about uh, what we see at the health department and what's going on. So this summer, the Delta variant continues to surge through our community. COVID-19 cases were four times higher this Labor Day weekend than last year with a total of 2,502 cases in the last seven days. The spike in cases, the hospitalizations and deaths have led to a return to masks and some continuing to work from home. As the fall holidays approach, it will be critical for us to understand the virus and remember the lessons we've learned from the past. All people, whether vaccinated or not, should continue wearing masks indoors, especially in areas where coronavirus infections and transmission rates are high, such as here in Nueces County. Whether or not we have a winter surge is going to depend partly on what percent of people are fully vaccinated and what portion of the community is still at risk or has no protection against the virus and whether we continue to practice our public health strategies. Since getting the full FDA approval of the Pfizer vaccine, vaccination rates have increased in August. Another cause for the increase in vaccinations is the number of hospitalized patients from the Delta variant leading to more people seeking the vaccine. Currently we have, as the mayor mentioned, 55% of our community fully vaccinated. These are from those that are eligible 12 years of age and up. So in our best case scenario, we're hoping to see a 20% increase before winter. Breakthrough infections are expected and don't diminish the fact that these vaccines are doing exactly what they were designed to do, to save lives and prevent serious illness. Because of natural waning of vaccine immunity, people will more than likely need a booster in the coming months. COVID-19 is constantly evolving and experts are looking at all available data to understand 
how well the vaccines are working, including how new variants, such as the Delta, affect vaccine effectiveness. If the FDA authorizes, and then the ACIP, the Advisory Council on Immunization Practice, recommends it to CDC, the goal is for people to start receiving a COVID-19 booster shot this fall. The FDA will be meeting September 16th to determine the next steps in the booster process. We are hearing that the Pfizer booster may be approved a few weeks before the Moderna booster is actually approved. So make sure that if you have a Pfizer vaccine initially and you got the two Pfizers, your booster more than likely will be Pfizer. If you had two shots of Moderna to complete the series, your booster will more than likely be Moderna. So of course, all of that information will be coming out soon. And when it does, we will share it with the community. We continue to provide, to provide Regeneron, which is monoclonal antibody treatment for mild to moderate COVID positives. Regeneron's therapy can provide protection against severe illness, even though it is not a replacement for the vaccine. This treatment has shown to be 70% effective at avoiding hospitalizations and deaths. These monoclonal antibodies have proven to radically reduce the chance that somebody ends up being hospitalized and at the end of the day, reducing hospital admission is our top priority. The locations are Physicians West at 2601 Hospital Boulevard across from Old Memorial Hospital and the hours are Monday through Friday, eight to four and Saturdays, eight to noon. And you can call the health department Monday through Friday, eight to five at 361 561-1101 to get a referral to get these monoclonals if you're positive with COVID-19 and you meet the eligibility. The second location is at the Richard Borcher Fairgrounds and this is for the Regeneron Infusion Center. And it's a state run facility and their hours are actually seven in the morning to 7 p.m. So, and they do require referrals. You can get them from your physician's office or you can um, call us if you wanna get a, a referral as well. But they also have a hotline and that hotline number is 1-800-742-5990. So I wanted to end by showing you the slides that I showed you uh, last week. And so the first slide here is going to show you from July 1st through September the 7th, kind of cumulative over this third wave, if you will. The number of people that have gotten COVID uh, is 15,492 on the right side um, or on your left side. 15,492 not vaccinated. Those individuals actually got COVID-19. And if you look on the other side with the green little icons, which in, indicate uh, 25 per person there, those ones are 595 people that were fully vaccinated that did get COVID-19. And what I wanna mention about that also is those individuals, even though they uh, got COVID-19, they normally will have a more mild to moderate symptom. And so they're not gonna be those individuals that we really um, um, will see in the hospital. So, and I'm gonna show the next slide, which is actually the hospitalized, so. And so what you see here is from August 23rd through September 7th, and you see total hospitalized COVID inpatients admitted. And this is for two hospitals. This is for one adult hospital here in Nueces County, and it's also for our children's hospital. They're both included. So I didn't have data for the other hospital, so I didn't include that in here. But what you see is you see all the red beds, that says that those individuals were not vaccinated, and that's 246 people that were hospitalized that were not vaccinated. And then the green beds you see over here represents 34 um, people that were hospitalized that took up a bed in our hospital that actually were vaccinated. They were vaccinated and they're what we call breakthrough cases. So you're, you, you do see some because of the large number of people that we vaccinate, you do see some people that were fully vaccinated and they still end up getting COVID and some of them end up also in the hospital. But the numbers are so much lower than those that were not vaccinated. So I just wanted to point that out because again, it is your choice, you know, if you want to get vaccinated or not. But we know that right now, with this third wave, wave we uh, basically refer to it as a pandemic of the unvaccinated. So um, 
Continue to stay safe. Follow those uh, protocols, your safety protocols, wearing your mask, social distancing, um, and as always, stay informed. I'm gonna turn it over to Gabby for a translation, and then uh, we will turn it over to Dr. Bird from Texas A&M for uh, some further statistics on where we are in the pandemic. Thank you. El día de hoy se reportan 306 casos positivos, 9, fa 9 fallecimientos, 324 hospitalizaciones, 95 personas se encuentran en cuidados intensivos. A la fecha, los fallecimientos totalizan 1,073 personas. Este mes de septiembre posiblemente sea el, el mes en donde más fallecimientos se han reportado desde que sea, desde dio comienzo la pandemia el año pasado, en marzo. La variante Delta continúa reportándose en nuestra comunidad. Los casos por COVID-19 fueron cuatro veces más altos este fin de semana del día de trabajo que el año pasado. El aumento en los casos, las hospitalizaciones y las muertes ha provocado que más personas vuelvan a utilizar el cubrebocas y otras regresan a trabajar de manera remota. Continuamos pidiendo que todas las personas continúen utilizando su cubrebocas, independientemente de su estatus con la vacuna. La tasa de vacunación afortunadamente ha aumentado desde que la FDA aprobó la vacuna Pfizer, además del aumento en las personas hospitalizadas. Actualmente estimamos que el 55% de los residentes del condado están completamente vacunados y esperamos ver un aumento del 20% durante este invierno. Debido a la disminución natural de la inmunidad en las vacunas, es muy probable que las personas necesiten un refuerzo en los próximos meses. Si la FDA lo autoriza, esta vacuna de refuerzo pudiera ofrecerse para este otoño. Seguimos proporcionando Regeneron, que es un tratamiento con anticuerpos monoclonales. La terapia de Regeneron puede brindar protección contra enfermedades graves, aunque no sustituya la vacuna. Este tratamiento ha demostrado ser 70% efectivo para evitar hospitalizaciones y muertes. El tratamiento solo se proporciona con referencia médica. Para más información u obtención de una referencia, se le pide llamar al 361-561-1101. Es importante indicar que 15,492 personas con COVID han sido hospitalizadas y estas personas no contaban con una vacuna, mientras que 595 personas con COVID han sido hospitalizadas, pero estas personas contaban con una vacuna. Estas cifras son del 1 de julio al 7 de septiembre, mientras que durante el 23 de, desde el 23 de agosto al 7 de septiembre, 246 personas fueron hospitalizadas sin vacuna y 34 personas fueron hospitalizadas con vacuna. Es importante reiterar que es importante es, es, importante las diferencias de números de las personas que han estado vacunadas y quienes no han estado vacunadas. Good evening everybody. My name is Dr. Chris Bird. I'm here to speak to you on behalf of the Texas A&M University Corpus Christi Informatics and Modeling team. We have two objectives on the modeling team this week. Um, one is to address your concerns and questions about COVID-19, and the second is to enable evidence-based decision-making on behalf of our local leaders. What happened to the presentation this week? I apologize for these extra lines and graphics in there. But anyway, um, I just want to review a couple of the records that have been broken in this current Delta, Delta wave. One was we had 3,683 cases in a week in the coastal bend. Uh, that was the seven days leading up to August 23rd. Previous high was much lower at 2,917. Second is we've had 556 inpatients that were COVID positive on one day in the coastal bend that occurred on August 29th. The previous high was 528 and uh, July 22nd of 2020. Um, and we all know what follows after hospitalizations, and that's fatalities. We're hoping that we're not going to break records uh, for that, but uh, that remains to be seen. Okay, first we'll go over to the case counts. Uh, these are the case counts broken down by vaccination status. The uh, side where you see all the dots and lines, that's the people that are unvaccinated. And on the side where you see not a lot of dots and everything's kind of down near the bottom, that, those are the people that are vaccinated. So many more people that are unvaccinated are testing positive. And then we have it broken down by age. So the different colors represent different ages. You have the youngest age groups at the top, people zero to 19 years old. Uh, they represent the largest group of people that are testing positive right now. Those are the children in the coastal bend. And then as you go down, the graph, you go to higher and higher age groups uh, successfully, 20 to 39, 40 to 59, and 60 plus. 
One thing to note is that all of those numbers of cases, at least on this graph, look like they've peaked and they're on their way down. However, uh, that decline kind of stopped in the past week. So we were declining nicely and then we hit a plateau. And a plateau is not good when we're going down. We want to keep going down. Uh, what you're seeing is the calibration of the model, where in the orange you have the modeled number of infections in the coastal bend from COVID-19, and in the black you have the actual number of cases. And these are on a weekly basis. We do this every seven days. Each dot represents the previous seven days because it smooths out the data and makes it look nice instead of being all over the place. Uh, and so you can see right at the end of the graph that it levels off. And so in the past week, there has not been a decline in cases on average. And so the way that we can explain that in the model is that there had to have been an increase in the transmission rate, which we weren't hoping for. Last week, I talked about uh, that if we can keep on the same track and keep declining, that will have a narrow uh, wave. And uh, the narrower the wave, the less power there is. Uh, but when the transmission rate kicks up, and this is on average how many uh, additional people are infected, uh, and right now that number is about for every 100 people that get infected, there's another 90 people that they infect themselves, but it did kick up right up back to one. And so that's uh, the way that we can uh, make the model match the data by increasing that transmission rate. And the, uh, oh yeah, I forgot I had this. So right there, you can see that little bump up. Oops. Right, right there. Okay, so that's that little jump that we saw. And uh, for what it's worth, it looks like that occurred somewhere around August 22nd. Okay, so what effect does that change have? It didn't look very big on that last graph. But on this graph, in the blue, you see last week's projection. In the red, you see this week's projection. These are the uh, projected uh, number of people with COVID in the ICU. Uh, in the uh, kind of wider curve, the thicker curve, that's the new projection based upon this uh, this jump up in the transmission rate. So we were hoping to keep a narrow curve, uh, narrow waves, uh, thin waves have less power, but now it looks like we're gonna have a little bit wider wave. Um, the black points for what it's worth, those are the actual number of people in the ICU. This value has peaked, and as uh, the public health director pointed out for Nueces County, as well for the whole coastal bend, the values are going down, just not as quickly as we would have hoped. Uh, for the total number of inpatients with COVID, that's what this graph represents. Again, the black dots are the actual number of people in the hospital with COVID each day. It is declining, but our projections indicate that it's going to decline more slowly now, given that increase in transmission rate uh, on August 22nd. And numbers of people in the hospital is effective in showing you this, where the, obviously the peak there is higher than it was last summer. Um, but something else that we're concerned with is exactly how much of the hospital capacity is taken up at this point. Right now, 33% of our hospital capacity is devoted to COVID patients alone. The rest of the capacity is dedicated uh, to everybody else. Realize that this capacity is averaged across all the hospitals. I mean, some hospitals have a much larger proportion of their capacity devoted to COVID-19. Those would be our hospitals treating adults and other hospitals have a lower proportion of their capacity devoted to COVID-19. That's probably our children's hospitals. Now, where you really see this impact is on the amount of vacancies in our hospitals right now. We're at the lowest uh, amount that we've ever seen during the pandemic. Uh, so since March of 2020, we haven't seen only 2.2% vacancy in the hospitals in the coastal bend. But that's what we have at the last measurement. It was even a little bit lower than that a couple days ago. Uh, so that probably means that there's at least one hospital out there that might have no vacancy right now. Um, and 2.2% is the average across all the hospitals. And if you're wondering like what happened for that to uh, occur, well, one is that the cases of COVID didn't decline the way that we thought they would, but two is that the staffing declined over the past week. And so uh, really is a decrease in staffing that's uh, driven this percentage so low. And uh, this isn't people playing with the numbers. Hospitals don't like their vacancy to be at 2.2%. 
uh, you can see normally it's up at about 35% or even 40%. So this is the thing we're really concerned with with COVID is being able to get the level of care that you would get normally. And obviously that's not possible right now. Elective surgeries probably aren't really occurring because all these hospital resources need to be devoted to COVID patients. So if you had a loved one that needs open heart surgery, it's gonna be less likely to happen right now. And they're, they're gonna be delaying surgeries like that. Okay, lastly for fatalities, um, the, the fatality numbers are going up. I wanna remind you that these numbers that are shown here, they're the counts from the state of Texas for the coastal bend. So they're a little bit different than what the public health director uh, reports just for Nueces County. Uh, and also, um, I don't have a beeline to every county in the Coastal Bend's fatality numbers. I only get it through DSHS. And it takes DSHS about 14 days to count up the death certificates and determine how many people have died from COVID-19. So that's why it looks like this isn't quite up to date because not all the fatalities have been processed yet. And the more fatalities there are, the longer it takes to process. So there's a little bit of lag right now. Um, our projection is that the fatalities will have peaked on September 4th, but as you can see, we don't really have data over to that point yet, even though that's in the past for us. Uh, and we'll see if that holds true. Um, I'm a little bit more confident in that than I am in what the ultimate height of this uh, fatality peak is gonna be, because as you see, the projection isn't going as high as values that we're already seeing. So I think that the projection is probably a little bit low and I expect that we're gonna see these fatalities uh, continue to increase. And these kind of low data points that you see all the way over, um, that's probably due to not all the death certificates being counted yet, only some of them were counted for those dates. So we need to wait a few more days to see those fill in. Okay, so in summary, the new cases uh, have leveled over the past week and that's not good because they were going down. Right, so if we're going down, we want them to keep going down, but they didn't, they leveled off. Um, so uh, hopefully that changes and we start going down again. Uh, the way that we make the number of cases go down is to put on your masks when you're out in public, uh, get vaccinated, social distance, do those things that are necessary to stop from contracting and spreading COVID-19, it's, it's that simple. If you put on a mask, you are immediately protected. You immediately decrease the transmission rate in your immediate vicinity. So it definitely works. Hospitalizations are declining and that's good. The problem is staffing in the hospitals is also declining right now. And so we're at this point where we have a very low amount of empty beds in the hospitals. Recommendations for how to handle this Delta wave and flatten it and keep it thin moving forward. If you're symptomatic, self-isolate number one. Two, get tested. If you test positive, get the presidential treatment and get some of these uh, monoclonal antibodies. They're free. Uh, most, in most of the country, you have to pay a lot of money to get this monoclonal antibody treatment. This is the same treatment that former President Donald Trump got, and you can get it here in the Coastal Bend for free. Uh, if you want to try to walk in, all you have to do is call the public health department first. Uh, to make sure that they're ready for you and you're gonna need some sort of proof that you're COVID positive. Once you end up in the hospital, it's too late to get the monoclonal antibodies. The purpose of these antibodies is to keep you out of the hospital. Uh, so that's why if you test positive, you wanna immediately try to get the monoclonal antibodies. Uh, then uh, if uh, you're not positive, mask up in public, social distance, do all those things that stop the transmission of COVID and slow it down and get vaccinated. Remember, after your first shot, you're not immediately immune. It takes a good bit of time. If you get the messenger RNA vaccines, think Pfizer and Moderna, it's gonna take a full six weeks from that first shot before you achieve the full benefits of that vaccination. With the Johnson & Johnson, I think it's four weeks from, from that shot, or maybe even two weeks. And that, two weeks? Two weeks. All right, with Johnson & Johnson to get the full benefit of that. So that's this week's report. Thank you for um, tuning in and we'll see what the numbers say next week. Tan solo en una semana en el área de la costa se reportaron 3,683 casos. Anteriormente esa cifra récord era de 2,917 casos en el mes de julio del 2020. La gran mayoría de los casos es de personas que no están vacunadas. El número de infecciones no ha disminuido, pero tampoco se ha visto un aumento importante. El radio de transmisión del virus ha aumentado, por eso no se ha visto disminución en el número de casos. 
El número de pacientes en la unidad de cuidados intensivos ha disminuido ligeramente. Las hospi los hospitales continúan reportando el 33% de sus pacientes por COVID. Las camas disponibles en los hospitales es de solo, solo el 2.2%. En resumen, los casos continúan altos durante la última semana. Las hospitalizaciones han disminuido. El número de fallecimientos es el más alto desde el comienzo de la pandemia. Las recomendaciones para disminuir estas cifras siguen siendo las mismas. Si cuenta con síntomas, aíslese para evitar más contagios. Obtenga tratamiento monoclonal lo más pronto posible. Utilice su cubrebocas, practique distanciamiento social y vacúnese contra el COVID. All right, I'm going to open it up to questions. Seeing none, thank you very much for being here at our uh, press conference, and we will see you again next week. Thank you.